podcast number 11 and today's Pharmaversity session. Uh, I do have Andrew Crawford on the line. Uh, he is our business development manager uh, for the U.S., especially for special vitals. Today's podcast will be all about functional coatings in vitals, and, uh, and he will give us a, a detailed insight on the application, the features, and, and also about any specifics that you might need for your future drug development projects. So, Andrew, I'm very happy and delighted to have you on the line. Thank you for being here. Um, and um, I'm already looking forward to, to, this, uh, to this podcast. Great. Thank you for having me. So, if you don't mind, Andrew, I will jump right into the first question. And as I said, it's going to be all about functional coatings. So, what are functional coatings in pharmaceutical container packaging and how are they made? Sure. Yeah, that's a great first question. Um, so, functional coatings are coatings on the inside of the vial that are meant to function and um, either prevent or interact with the drug formulation in a predetermined means. Um, so the way that they are made is by using a plasma impulse chemical vapor deposition or PICVD process. And this process is a gaseous process. And that's key. A gaseous process as opposed to a sol gel or another type means that we have no free residuals on the surface. In essence, all of the, the silicon that could be a free residual is either covalently bonded to the glass or simply blown away. So I can imagine that, uh, as you just explained, there are different types of functional coatings. And, and if so, and, and I'm not an expert, and you know this, what are those different types? And can you explain a little bit more on, on, on that? Sure. Uh, yeah, so the different types, we have currently two different types of functional coatings. One is called top lyo, and one is called type 1 plus. Top lyo is a hydrophobic coating that is meant for lyophilization. Um, and type 1 plus is an ion barrier quartz-like coating that functions to block ion exchange as well as pH shift and protein absorption, just to name a few applications. Okay. So, so I'm pretty sure, as you just explained, so there are different coatings out there uh, and different types for different applications. Um, can you explain a little bit more on, on the application side for, for our audience? Our audience usually is our pharmaceutical manufacturers, drug developers, etc. cetera. Are, and, and, and they're probably more interested in, are they geared towards a specific application? And maybe you have more insights on that. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, top lyo is for lyophilization. Um, the, really the application within lyo is if you're having challenges with things like fogging um, or cake aesthetics, as well as um, getting all of your liquid drug out of the vial after reconstitution. So the hydrophobic surface Acts to, um, acts to allow all of the liquid to be removed as none of the liquid will stick to the normally hydrophilic glass surface. Um, and as well as with fogging and cake aesthetics, um, it will prevent the Marangoni effect from occurring. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a really nice looking cake. For type one plus, um, as I mentioned, some of the applications are to prevent ion exchange. And so when this SiO2 coating is on the inside of your glass surface, the drug formulation and the glass material do not interact at all. So you therefore 
have no ion exchange coming out of the glass into the drug formulation. Um, this also has an application of preventing protein absorption on the glass surface um, as the quartz coating is net neutral in charge. Um, yeah, so, so that's a little more detail about the specific applications. This sounds to me like this is something highly innovative in the market. Are, the, are these or these types of functional coatings new to the market or have they proven already their space in the marketplace? Good question. Um, yeah, they are highly technical and, and innovative coatings. Um, but, and maybe this isn't the answer one would expect, they're not new to the market. Um, these particular functional coatings, Type 1 Plus and Top Lyo, have been in the market for over 20 years. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of unexpected. Um, they're very proven in the marketplace um, with large scale commercial uses from various pharmaceutical companies um, and not just small ones either, some of the main bigger companies as well. Okay. Um, I I think you, you raised now the interest of uh, some of our people uh, uh, and listeners to this podcast. So when should drug developers begin testing and, and working with these uh, special vials? Mm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. You know, uh, really as soon as possible. The earlier you can start working with these in your drug development cycle, the better. Um, one of the one of the side notes that should be mentioned is that as these functional coatings covalently bond with the glass surface, in essence, they are considered a surface enhancement of the glass. So if you start working with a type one borosilicate glass, um, you will have to re-register to use the functional coatings. Um, therefore, in order to save time and have the most efficient development process, you should begin work with these special vials as soon as possible, um, not only to avoid the situation I just mentioned, but also you're going to find that you save a lot of time and, and trouble by not having to overcome the challenges with type 1 glass vials. So, so, so you mentioned, and, and, and I, at least I, I understood, one of a key feature is the hydrophobicity of, of, of that coating, of one of the coatings and the covalently bonded uh, coating. And how does, how does SHOP test and, and prove the functionality of the coating? Are there any special release criteria or methods uh, being applied that you can share with our audience? Um, and sure. What do you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because each coating is unique and special and has a particular purpose, we test them differently. Top Lyo, uh, we test the hydrophobicity um, using a, an opaque test fluid, and we agitate this fluid within the vial and observe visually the hydrophobic nature of the opaque fluid. And um, if the coating was not there or if it was damaged, um, we would easily be able to see this. As far as type 1 plus, um, you know, we have within pharma, we have the glass grains test to test the chemical composition of the bulk glass itself. We have the surface hydrolytic resistance test. Um, but shock goes even a step further with type 1 plus. Um, we have uh, our own unique test, which instead of using water, uh, we use 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid, which is extremely aggressive. Uh, we do the test for six hours at elevated temperature instead of one hour. And our pass criteria is 
more than 10 times stricter than the hydrolytic resistance test. So we use a more aggressive test and have stricter pass-fail criteria um, to make sure there's no sodium leaching or extracting out of the glass through the coating. Wow, so I'm, I'm, I'm already becoming a big fan of those two coatings, Top Lyo and Type 1 Plus, as you just explained them, um, uh, with the features and the benefits that they have, but also assuring a, a stable and constant quality um, in, in your manufacturing sites. Um, but um, let me ask one question, uh, because uh, I think it is important. Is there a limitation or are there limitations for the use of those functional codings you just explained? And what does it mean for product development? Sure. <laughs> There's always this question. <laughs> um, and it's a fair question. So obviously nothing we make is perfect. Um, we try to be that way though. So regarding the limitations, um, I'll be very direct. With Top Lyo, the limitation is that it's not meant for liquid storage. Um, it's, it's perfectly fine and it's okay for the liquid drug after reconstitution. But um, if you are storing the liquid for a year or some longer amount of time, um, it's really not designed for that. The limitation for type 1 plus is really pH. Um, while type 1 plus is good for acidic up to about a pH of maybe seven and a half or eight, depending on the specific drug formulation and the constituents, um, above that pH of say maybe seven and a half or eight, um, type 1 plus is not designed to function well. So high pH is the limitation of type 1 plus. So always my last question, and I think this is, of course, something that our listeners always are interested in. Um, as you briefly touched ground on, on, on some of the limitations of the two existing codings um, that, uh, that you just uh, elaborated on, can you give us an outlook on maybe new developments you are working on right now to, to maybe overcome exactly those described uh, challenges that you just mentioned? Absolutely. This is the fun question. Um, we are working on something uh, to overcome these challenges. And what we have in our R&D pipeline, uh, we have a new functional coding. So this is not intended to replace the other two, but be an additional option for pharmaceutical drug developers. This functional coding will be called Everick Care. And um, it's going to combine the best of both worlds. So it will be able to handle liquids. It will be hydrophobic. The pH range will be extended, especially in the higher pHs, above pH 8, above pH 9. Um, so really, when you have these extremely difficult drugs that just don't want to cooperate, Everett Care is going to be your functional coding of choice. And as I mentioned, um, it's not replacing type 1 plus or top lyo. It's simply another tool to put in your toolbox when you're looking at primary packaging for your drugs. Thank you. And, uh, and Andrew, honestly saying um, this, this idea and this R&D uh, work right now looks very, very promising. Um, and, and, and I like that approach as, as we know that 21st century trucks are, are getting more specialized, more individualized, very special uh, in, in terms of their, um, let's say, uh, their constitution, et cetera, and their functionality. Um, I think it is time to have a broad portfolio of different types of features in a vial. And, and you, you perfectly explained that. I, I, I can only thank you um, for, this, uh, for this insight and sharing your knowledge 
uh, on functional codings uh, within this podcast. Oh, you're very welcome. And once again, uh, thank you for having me and thank you everyone for, for listening. Yeah, thank you um, to the audience, to our listeners. Um, this was Andrew, Dr. Andrew Crawford, our business development manager for the North American market, a, a class scientist and a class specialist, uh, especially when it comes to functional codings and vials. Uh, I was very happy to touch and chat with you today um, uh, on this topic. Uh, and I'm already looking forward to the next podcast, number 12, uh, which will be released very, very soon. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And thank you to the audience for being here today. Mm -hmm.